Hi, my name is Heather Mackey. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and the topic today is worthy of love. I can't really think of a, a two-legged I've engaged with that hasn't struggled with knowing um, in all of their hours that they're worthy of love. One of the ways it can show up uh, when someone is not aware that they're worthy of, worthy of love is the volume on the dial of self-esteem, instead of being in balance and right there in the middle with a healthy self-esteem and a healthy ego, is turned to 100. And narcissistic disorder takes over and um, bombastic behavior takes over and um, setting oneself as supreme or superior to others takes over and being just operating in a, in a really egocentric, I'm the best um, and better than the rest type of consciousness takes over. And when you truly have healthy self-esteem and healthy ego, you, you don't need to hold the self superior to any other part of life. You subatomically are unified with all of it. So, so you, you would walk more in balance with being aware that you are worthy of love and so is all of life. When the dial gets turned to zero, you can play the role of lowly worm, unworthy, I don't matter, I should never speak, um, people don't get me, you know, wow, that person's clearly more valuable, precious, talented, artistic than I am. Um, and again, that is, is holding the self special. I'm special because I'm less than everyone else. So when we have a balanced you know, healthy self-love, self-esteem, self-respect, we keep our word to ourself. When, if we, if we give our word to ourself, we keep it to ourself. We don't put ourselves on the back burner, but we also don't hold ourselves as superior by being inferior. Oh no, I'm worse than the rest of humanity, which is a specialness you're giving yourself. Um, or, you know, I'm better than the rest of humanity which is another form of specialness. We instead just hold the self as what we are. A, a being with cognitive capacities, emotive capacities, unique gifts and talents, things to develop and grow on. We all have that. I, The more I marinate on this topic, and I, I've had many moments in my own life where I've felt unworthy of love, unlovable, um, which is kind of hilarious, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious when I reflect on my life, because although I've had some intense learning, my intent, I, I feel comfortable to meet Ma'at, the Egyptian goddess, to weigh my heart against the weight of an ostrich feather, because my intent and my heart back of it all has been pure. It has been loving. Uh, and that's the primary thing I've done here. And I think that for most most two-leggeds, that's true. And anywhere that's not showing up, they just had a false teacher. From zero to seven, you develop your personality matrix. There's a, a further development that occurs from eight to 14, typically. And that matrix that constructs your ego and your self-esteem, whatever pattern was developed during that period is usually going to be repeated. It's going to be the cycle that you evolve in. So when a two-legged is toxic or poisonous or be operating in unhealthy ways, self-deprecating ways, narcissistic ways, any of those things of the spectrum that are not in balance or the middle path of I love me and I love everything I see because it's all connected subatomically <laughs> and I've decided to love you know, when, when we are out of balance, which I have been for the majority of my life out of balance, I've done the zero dial. I'm a lowly worm under the feet of humanity, unworthy to even walk amongst mankind, uh, much less, you know, be valued. Um, when we do that, it stems from a false teacher. It means that somewhere while we were developing our personality, someone came along that offered us a false teaching that was like, 
you shouldn't speak or you're too loud or keep it down or, you know, focus up on being who I want you to be or, you know, we were negated or invalidated. Um, however, however, if you go to a flower and tell it like, you're so stupid and you're so ugly and I hate you flower. Does it take away its worth or value? Did it change its worth or value? If you turn to a bee or a tree or anything that you see and you say, like, you, you, you jerk, you ugly, stupid, I judge thee, you should be like me, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Things are fundamentally being. They are being. And worthiness is an interesting topic because there's a fundamental implication that there is that which has worth and that which does not. It's as if, you know, like there's, there's these, the, these, you know, the saints, the sacred, the loving, they're worthy of love. But no, if you're, if you're operating out of fear or if you're X, Y, Z, whatever the judgment is in a two legged ego matrix construct, then that is not worthy of love. And you need to, you need to get to the worthy of love side so that you can have self-esteem and healthy ego and be worthy of existing. <laughs> you know, as I mean, it's so funny how two leggeds can walk around like, Hey flower, you, you are not worthy of existing. <laughs> you need to step up your A game. It's like some flowers are, are missing petals. You know, some, some, Every creature looks different. Every creature has different gifts, different offerings. You know, the bee's knees pollinate our flowers. The trees help us breathe. There are different things that each life component is offering the allness. Each energy component, component even inanimate objects, are offering the allness because they're also energy, frequency, vibration. So I just, I, I laugh, I laugh at myself today, <laughs> which I try to do every day is make myself laugh. Mostly is what I'm doing with my time because fun. <laughs> but like, why, why is worth even a topic? What does that mean to be worthy of love? You know, what is unconditional love? And what does it mean to be worthy of love? Is there anything that isn't lovable? There's plenty that you can you can judge if you want to not love. Yeah, that's a great way to step out of the offering called love. In my experience, judgment comes from fear of the unknown, lack of understanding, lack of time and attention offered towards understanding, and lack of compassion. And if there's anything I've judged, which I have done, I'm a two-legged, I have an ego, <laughs> you know, I, I can be like, you don't litter and you shouldn't drive a Hummer and you, but that's not true because people litter and people drive Hummers and <laughs> clearly everything's allowed down here. <laughs> so, so, so I'm not the designer. So with the design that's present, the question is, if I don't understand that, can I have compassion that they had different teachers than I did? They had different teachers, which causes them to have a different philosophy. You know? So, yeah. I want to invite myself, and I'm always inviting you right along with me, to no longer look for any reason to be worthy. Like to me, there is no worthiness. There's just offeringness. I'm either offering love to myself, to my sacred temple, to my blessed, luminous, brilliant gift in my drop of the ocean of the all that is. And I'm offering love to the ocean and each distinct drop or each unique piece of sand. And I'm just one grain, beautiful, shining in the light of the sun, 
and all the grains, unique, valid, valuable. Make a beach. <laughs> Make a beach. Fun. <laughs> so, I will always want to come back to, am I choosing love? I'm unified with it all. These are just the scientific theories that we call facts because they consistently remain t true, you know. It's, it's energetically unified. It's a bunch of subatomic, subatomic particles that are mostly emptiness, bouncing around in a field of emptiness with a beautiful part that matters. And um, it looks like a bunch of separate, distinct things. So I, I, I just, I want to, I want to laugh at the conversation of worthiness of love. It's, it's not, there is no worth or non-worth. There just is isness. I would say isness is my business. Like my business is ising. I am ising. I am being. And, and the cockroach is being and the butterfly is being. They're just being. They just are. Is the cockroach bad and the butterfly good? Well, if we judge them, sure. If we choose to judge them, we can just love them though. Exactly, distinctly as they are and not judge them. That's also an option, how we can flip the script on our consciousness. Choose again. <laughs> Let's choose again, maybe. <laughs> so I, I don't ever want to ask diversity to be singular in its expression. What I want is to have understanding that love is a, an appropriate response for me based on what I say I want to experience in life and any that would choose to offer something other than that to me or any time I've offered something other than that to someone else it stems from a false teacher babies don't come in like oh what a gross garbage human baby oh why did you have this disgusting evil villain baby nobody says that because it's not a thing <laughs> <laughs> An innocent, beautiful, sacred, wonderful, smelling, honest in their expression every moment of now child is born and is then offered false teachers and then they repeat the cycle of the false teaching. And in my book, love is an appropriate response to all of it. It feels more like me when I do it. Feels more like me when I'm loving. And... Um, in the end, offers me a greater frequency, a greater experience of what it means to be alive, to be a part of life, to be unified. I don't have to get as triggered and charged and trying to correct a world that will always be diverse. I instead can recognize that, wow, there's great diversity here and it all deserves love. It all deserves reverence. It all deserves respect. Um, that's what I choose. That's what I choose, choose to walk in. But worth to me was never the question. It simply is life is, it is ising. And, and, and how do you, what is your business with the isness? How do you choose to respond to the isness you don't understand because you were given a different hand? You're playing a different card game in the game of life, you know? <sighs> may I, may you, may everything that sees in its beingness, choose love, love for self, love for all, the middle path, so that we don't have to have these falls from being on a volume that's just too loud or quiet. Love thyself, not because you're worthy, but because you are, blessed be.